In this world, nightmares lurk. They hide in our neighborhoods, walk our streets, wear our faces. But they are not us. They are the world's best kept secret. And we are going to find them. Welcome to Uncanny Valley Cancer Cell. everyone and welcome this is a chronicles of darkness tabletop campaign played in the hunter the vigil storyteller system last time we left a section of the party in a physical therapy institute helping jd's touchstone mackenzie try to understand her family curse Mason just got off the phone with Charlie, who didn't have a lot to say about black balls, or at least not the kind he was asking about. A strange and bewildering conversation. Darla has completely failed to demonstrate her skills as a, quotation marks, real witch. Real hey, witch. my reading was correct. <laughs> God the damn it. Witch. I am so mad about this. Don't believe me. Bullshit. <laughs> and uh, Mackenzie and her uncle, Carver are sort of looking at you all expectantly. So, um, is this uh, all you do? Carver says. <laughs> this is a, this is a, you're looking at me. I'm not the one with the uh and the 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 the, the senses. If I could, I I need to do some more research to see if anyone else in the records I have has had your condition. Could I just walk about the facility and see if there's any other feelings like I'm getting from you? Um, I mean, if you have to, just uh, don't don't go in any you know patient rooms. I mean, sure. it's it's a it's a functioning, it's the best physical therapy institute I, in I the country. I won't bother anybody other than looking as I do. Okay, and Carver, can you can you walk him around? And Carver's sort of like, yeah, sure, no problem. I'll, I'll show, him, show him around, make sure it doesn't disturb anyone. Hey, Kenny, do you have any, like, do you have, like, records of everybody's accidents and stuff? Yeah. Most I mean, I, I don't I don't look at them too often. They're kind of depressing. But, yeah, I, yeah, I got them. Yeah, for sure. Um, in fact, I, I think they're here. She yeah. wheels over to her um, desk in the corner and opens uh, the sort of big lower cabinet and pulls out a, a stack of files. Yeah, let me, um, let me go through some of it. Okay. So yeah, she and, uh, she lays it on the table for you. It's it's a good five inches tall, full of you know different yellow folders and and notes and new newspaper clippings and whatever. Um, I think Darla wants to because she's mad. Um, <laughs> wants to try it again. Um, try try reaching out to that vision that she saw earlier and really concentrate on the man in the trophy. Okay. And see if she can sort of... That'll be a first. <laughs> a woman looking at a man in a trilby. Oh, um, yeah. That's exactly the opposite of the point. Yeah. Uh, she's really going to... M'lady. Go, ooh. Ooh. Uh, she's really going to concentrate on him and see what kind of a read she can get from that being. Okay. Are you going to try and ritualize this in some way, or are you just going to do a straight read? Is there anything in this room with which I could ritualize? <laughs> um, well, you know that the um, the little canisters of mist have some kind of properties that you could investigate. Uh, you also there's a you remember seeing a uh, massage room on your way here, which had candles in it. How weird would that be? <laughs> I'm just gonna go steal some candles. I'm just, I'm back. just offering because you have uh, used candles in the past to try and, and connect there be, there spiritually. Be candles in this kind of place. Therapy and whatnot. Okay, so Darla uh, turns back to JD and she's like, "Okay, I, I understand that what I said earlier didn't sound like anything. Um, I understand you're being sincere." 
and I want. It's weird. I know it. It sounds real <laughs> weird, and I know it doesn't. It's not usual. Normally, it's like old people being like, "Hey, can you hear me?" or whatever. And this one isn't quite, uh, <clears throat> quite like that. And I'm. I did. I. I did genuinely pick that up. I. I. I, I appreciate I'm, it. I'm gonna see if I can try to get a little bit more info here. Okay. But I think I'm gonna need some candles. You're gonna need candles. Yeah. Okay, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> so just hear me out. That's all I'm saying. And I'll I'll go to the reception and I'll ask for candles, which I don't know that that'd be that weird of a request at this point. <laughs> yeah, she's not phased. She's like, oh, unscented or vanilla. Uh. Oh, we have some really great <laughs> sea breeze ones that that a supplier just sent us to try out. You know what? Just give me just give me the. the the sea breeze? Yeah, the sea breeze. Oh, yeah, breeze. they're lovely. And she picks out their, their sort of large, chunky <laughs> decorator type candles. Okay. <laughs> and I'll just take a few. But it's, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a pack of three a tall one, a medium, and a small one. <laughs> Thanks, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. And you show up in the room and they're always like, oh, sea breeze. You know what I like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put them down. She knows hey, candles well enough to um, instantly. Listen, she likes candles, okay? Oh, man. <laughs> um, uh, Darla sort of, like, pulls out um, pulls out her lighter. Um, she sets them up. How many of them are? The three? Three. She sets them in a kind of, like, a triangle pattern. Normally she goes with the pentagram. But, uh, <laughs> in, you know, lacking the candle space, she does one sort of, like, one in front of her and then two at her sides. Um, and she just, is there, like, a table that's close to her that she could set this up on? Yeah, there's a workspace next to the big levers. Is there anything on the workspace? <laughs> no, it, it's, it's, okay. a, it's an empty space. Alright, uh, so she just sort of commandeers that space um, and she looks over at um, Mackenzie and says, uh, can you okay, <coughs> I know this is going to be weird, <laughs> but can you dim the lights? I can turn them off. This is as dim as they get. How dim is it? It's like half what they would, what a normal fluorescent bulb would be. I, I mean, oh, okay, just turn them off. Let's, 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 let's. All right. Something. She wheels over. She powers down the machines, uh, and then um, goes to the the main set of the room and, and flicks all the switches. So you're all, you're. It's an interior room with no windows, so it is now complete darkness except for the candles. Okay. Um, so Darla sort of sets herself up in the middle of the of the candles um, and tries to use them as a focus so that she can sort of push her <laughs> the sort of bigger than herself feeling that she gets <laughs> whenever she uses her ability out and towards the man in the trophy. Sure, um, make me a it would be investigation, intelligence, or presence in this case. Whichever is better. Definitely presence. And uh, uh, I for for the strange? Yes. Yes. I for the strange. (laughs) It's 100% presence. Uh, Let's see. And then it's also investigation. So I think I need to borrow two dice. Thanks. Got my shit. You're fucking a gill. That's much better. That's certainly not shit. Two of those successes are my dice. (laughs) Three of those successes are my dice. Move the pink, purple over. Okay, so that would be five successes. That's an exceptional success. (laughs) Bitches! My successes were my dice. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to roll with John's dice forever now. John's dice. (laughs) So, Darla. He's got loaded dice. As you sit there singing your kumbaya and reaching outside of yourself. It's actually this little light of mine. <laughs> as you sit there singing this little light of mine and reaching out, being bigger than yourself, <laughs> you search out that esoteric presence of this man in his suit with his trilby hat. And really surprisingly, you feel him. You get a sense for his existence, you know, uh, in a in a vague way, not in a in a way that tells you, oh, he's at this place doing this. But you feel him in the same way that when you put your 
hand close to another person but don't quite touch. And that way you can feel the heat coming off their body and the way that their the hair on their arm maybe prickles and acknowledges a, a presence that is near but not touching. It feels like that. And then you follow that feeling further down and you get a vision of him walking in a theater. It is a... Um, a Broadway style theater with a large stage and red velvet curtains, uh, layers of balconies full of seats and a beautifully decorated mosaic ceiling with art deco walls and carved little um, leaves in the sides and a big aisle spanning from where the stage terminates with the orchestral pit. And you're standing in the main center aisle on the bottom floor and up on the stage, from seemingly nowhere, the man walks out onto the center of the stage and uh, puts his hand in his pocket and sets his briefcase down. He looks down at his watch very thoughtfully and sort of shakes his wrist in a reflexive action and just stands there looking around like he's meeting someone or waiting on a bus. And then the vision ends. You, you okay? Uh. <laughs> I, I saw that man again. He was he's in a theater this time. He was waiting waiting around, looking like he was waiting on somebody. A theater? Yeah, a, a theater. Like a like an old one. What'd it look like? Um I I'm not very good at Describe, let me let me let me sketch it out for you. She sort of finds a piece of paper and draws a rough, rough <laughs> approximation <laughs> rough. <laughs> of what this theater looks like. Mackenzie looks at it and and her eyes go wide and she looks up at you and she goes, "That's where I work." Like, like all the time. Uh, like right now, like recently. Yeah, that's. I was telling you about it. That's my f- pyrotechnics gig. Okay. Yeah, they've got a. They've got like a like a World War Two inspired like play running there, and that's that's what I do. I, I do all the explosions. Then that man is waiting for you right now. What time is it? Oh shit! I'm late for work. Okay, what, like what 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 time of day is it? It's now the um the early afternoon. Okay. What, what, why don't we, why don't we go? <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's go. I have the, I have the, the, the van. Well, uh, shit, I mean, now, is, is it safe? I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to get in some kind of accident, am I? Did I get any kind of malicious know. vibes off of that dude? Not directly, no. It's, it's, I mean, it's unsettling, but you don't feel negatively. Yeah, he was, he was creepy, but I, I'm not sure he's there specifically to, to hurt. Maybe not to hurt you. I'm. I, I would say our best way of getting answers is probably to go and just go and meet him and we'll see what I, happens. Well, maybe maybe we stay away from a lot of the more volatile stuff today. Oh yeah, as I, much I, as we can. I don't drive anymore. I, I take <laughs> no. I mean, I mean, I mean the explosives. Kenny, the explosives, stay away from the explosives today. Well, I, I can't, that's my job. That's, that's, I understand that, but let's... That's let's, what they pay me to do. Yeah, I mean, with, with the, get the, 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 the Trilby guy around. Well, apparently, I mean, mm. he, he could have been anywhere, right? Like, I guess that's true. We don't even know who this guy is. That this, this is ridiculous. I've made it this far. Okay. And the curse is going to get me someday anyway. And I'm not going to stop it. I'm not going to let it stop me from living my life. So, I'm going to go to work. Okay. All right? But it, I, I would feel... We will all go to work. We will all go work. to work with you. Something we do. We'll Can just we get sit in the back. We'll get tickets and we'll sit in the back. Yeah. We'll... And we'll just keep an eye out. Okay. Because he didn't like... He didn't give me like bad vibes, but this whole situation is creepy as hell. You can say I'm here to assist with whatever. You know, I can do that stuff. Yeah, this will be really not weird. All right. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> she leads you the way to the elevator. And with that, let's check in with Wolf. Okay. So, you've been researching 
this uh, individual, Jared. Yeah. Who you heard about at the Cat's Cradle Club. Yeah, at this point I'm probably on YouTube looking up Crazy Guy Cat Cradle Chicago. Okay, you actually, uh, I'm glad that you mentioned YouTube. That's a great place to start. Roll me an investigate. Oh, okay. Everyone here knows what happens if you fail this roll. <laughs> Baby shark. You, you find you weird YouTube. porn. <laughs> <laughs> on YouTube? Buddy, there's some, someone's kink is on okay. YouTube. Well, I know, but you gotta, I got two successes. You gotta get past the ban hammer. Two successes? <laughs> It's easy to get past the band hammer when it's feet, John. <laughs> I'm just saying, there's a lot of things on YouTube that would qualify as porn to somebody. Uh, I, I quit. I'll that are I quit. Not I don't want to do this anymore. I'm going home. I'll, I'll, I'll take your uh, your word for it there, Bumpo. There are people who have a kink for putting together furniture, okay? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of stuff that is not against mm-hmm. YouTube trends. Oh my god, can I hire those guys? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Enough about what I do in my spare time. Job. They'll pay oh, you. Oh, my. It's a dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. Nah, it, straight up, I'm fascinated by people's weird kinks. I think it's it's fucking mm-hmm. hilarious and, and cool at the same time. So. Well, it's not like this part's going to be. You search way. YouTube for weird stuff, right. Cat's Cradle, Jared. And you actually find a very blurry cell phone video of the night. Oh, cool. It's not as exciting as you were hoping. <laughs> it is actually a lot like what Teddy told you. A guy goes to get a drink from the bar, and a friend of his is filming him. Evidently, it was someone's birthday. Everyone's a little bit wasted. You have some woo girls going on in the background. And uh, he sort of turns around and and calls for a cheers, and everyone sort of clinks their glasses. And uh, he downs his uh, – he, he actually has a rather small sort of um, – uh, booze glass, like a tumbler. That's the word. Shot glass? Not quite a shot glass, like a tumbler. Okay. But he, right. he downs it nonetheless. He's here to party. And when he does, his um, face kind of takes on this weird expression, and he looks all around like he's seeing stuff that's not there. His uh, friends start making fun of him and sort of gently, you know, um, poking at him, being uh, disoriented. But then he starts speaking... Uh, And these very stilted, unusual phrases. He changes his, like, tone at at odd intervals. Roll me a... Let's see. Roll me a... Presence... Socialize roll. Presence and socialize. Yeah. I actually am statted for this. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) That's the best feeling. Yeah. Roll these things you have. Yes! <laughs> yeah, this is a read of your ability to read this situation and the, the subtext of what this man is, is experiencing. Yes, Daddy. Three successes. All right, so you, being the person that you are, recognize he's speaking in movie quotes from mm. different movies. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Uh, I pause the video, I grab some scratch paper and a pen, and... I play it, and I want to write down the exact lines he's saying. So, um, the man, uh, it's he starts out looking at his friends. Um, uh, God, I haven't watched any movies recently. <laughs> uh, if it's got to be, like, a huge thing, what we could do is you could just kind of, like, I could just... Maybe make I can make a roll to see if I recognize the movies. Okay, we could do that. Sure. Yeah, that'd be a lot easier, I think. So yeah, for your roll, um, he is quoting A Whole New World from Aladdin. <laughs> <laughs> he is quoting uh, the speech that the drill sergeant gives in Black Hawk Down. And he is quoting... Um, and this this is the, the three successes roll that you got is he is quoting um, one of the long wordy monologues from Snatch, the Guy Ritchie movie. Good taste in movies, but uh, OK. <laughs> and together they form a sort of message of him essentially uh, talking about seeing like uh, things that he's not supposed to see. So from the Aladdin, you get this the sort of whole new world bit. 
And from Black Hawk Down, you get the sort of allusions to worthlessness and and strife. And from Snatch, you get the the sort of jaded um, uh, mentality of someone stuck in a situation they don't want to be in. That's the sort of through line of it. All right. Um, Wolf's going to pause the video and rewind it, try to figure out what the exact moment this guy seems to go from normal to kind of bonkers. It's when he takes a drink. Huh. And with that, Wolf gets up, whips off his shirt, and he's going to the back. He's changing for the night. Ooh. Ooh. He's going out. <laughs> That's interesting. I need this bar seat. All right. All right. So Wolf is uh, shirtless, trying to pick out which one he's going to wear to this bar tonight because he was there. You have to dress nice. All right. So uh, and he's... At this point, you probably hear the the door swing open, and you hear uh, you hear Vic just call out, "I'm back! Anyone here?" Uh, just me. Hey, I think William's out chasing cars. That's fine. Everyone else is at church. That's not fine. <laughs> <laughs> he did, he literally does not care what what William is doing. I'm just imagining William like shirtless. Going, I could have got that one. I could have got, got it. We're the worst adoptive parents <laughs> ever. <laughs> and, ever. Then, and then some cops just like going, boop, boop, boop. We're gonna find him in the clink when we try and leave town. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> So go on, gentlemen. Okay, so <clears throat> so uh, Vic comes in and just like probably catches uh, probably catches Wolf putting on something nice. He's like, "Ooh, going on another date?" Uh, no. Um, and he kind of pauses and he kind of gets quiet for a moment. He's like, "What?" So I'm uh. Doing a project by myself. Oh. oh, okay. Tell me. Yeah. Um, I'm. I'm looking into what happened in St. Louis. Oh. Oh, okay. The 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 hell portal. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I I might have found something similar at a bar around here. And I, I don't want everyone to know, because I don't want everyone freaking out, so, um, yeah. Well, Vic is probably very conflicted at this point, because, uh, I, I think that, I think that he and, uh, he and Wolf probably had a very similar, you know, walk away from that, with the really, the really messed up sad stuff with the kid. Uh, yeah. So, uh... After after a bit of a pause, Vic just would probably say like, "Well, do you do you want to go alone?" I I mean I was planning on it, but uh, I mean, look, I I know this is not anything you want, so if you just want to hang out here, William's gonna be back. I, I he's not actually chasing cars. I gave him like twenty bucks and sent him to McDonald's, so he'll be <laughs> he'll be fine for the rest of the night. But uh. <laughs> Well, yeah, he'll be back soon if you want to hang out with him. Because, uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, he's nice, but, uh, well, where's that? Hmm? Well, I mean, like, you're the one going into something dangerous, and, like, I don't... I don't know, I don't want you to, like, leave and then never come back. Um, well... You're fine and I like you, is what I'm saying. So, I don't know, what are we oh. doing? Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, no, if you want to come with, I, I'd actually appreciate well, it. Well, you know? where where is it? Uh, it's just downtown Chicago. It's uh, this uh, nice bar thing. All right, cool. Uh, so uh, so he looks you over for a second, just goes uh, semi formal. Uh, yeah, it's a nicer place. All right, cool. And just like immediately, he has like, he pulls out like a shirt. Uh, pants like has like a few <laughs> different belts to uh, to choose from, and then just kind of like has like about six different ties, and he's just kind of like, which one pairs best? Wolf blinks a few times. Uh, that one. Got it. And so, uh, and just in a second, he ties a half Windsor, and he's just like ready. Sea breeze it is. <laughs> sea breeze it is. <laughs> <laughs> Great. 
All right. So uh, you, um, you gonna call an Uber? With that, they're off. All right. So um, yeah. we'll go ahead and skip to you guys getting to the building. I I just wanted to say I'm imagining uh, uh I, I'm imagining him like at the McDonald's, just like going up a dollar at a time, getting a getting a double cheeseburger, and just like ah rah rah rah. rah. <laughs> He's a growing puts another one down. He's a growing wolf. <laughs> another another dollar down. Just like, and he's just like standing at the counter. <laughs> Sir, you can dollar. <laughs> I don't know how many I want. I, I just love how we've decided wolves have made uh, werewolves in particular have made eating an anaerobic exercise. <laughs> <laughs> so right. you guys step out of the Uber. It is uh, nighttime in Chicago. There's uh, people walking up and down the street and a valet standing at a booth outside of the establishment. He sees you all and wa- looks at you expect- expectantly as you walk up. Uh, uh, hello, are you are you here for the, the cat's cradle, sirs? Uh, yes, we are. Um, all right. So what's your name? And he looks down at a, at a ledger. Uh, Vic Cooper. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. C O. I'm sorry, sir. I don't think you're on the list for tonight. Can uh, uh would you like to check again? He says as he prepares a fame roll. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, but I voiced a cartoon dinosaur like a decade ago. <laughs> I don't. I think you would like to check again. <laughs> Please do. This, okay, this so fame, fame expression and what else? Excuse you, but I voiced a cartoon dinosaur. Um, this would just be a fame <laughs> present. Fame uh, present. Oh, no, I love it. <laughs> Zero successes. <laughs> oh, it's all four spies no. and sixes. It says, um, um, not out of any disrespect for your, uh, you know, prestige, but the list is the list, sir. I'm sorry. It's a very exclusive establishment with a long waiting list. If you'd like, you can. Uh, excuse me. Yes, sir. Uh, what about the wolf man? The wolf man. <laughs> make a fake yeah. roll, please. And I'm going to make the fake <laughs> Oh, shit. Please. please the wolf please. 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 Is this, please. All right. Is this from, so socialize. Uh, what, what was the roll again? Presence, please. fame. Please, God. And that's it? That's Please, it. Jesus. <laughs> the amount of, like, oh. like, praying hands we have in this room right now. Oh, God. <laughs> I got two successes on that. What yes. the fuck? The, the, uh, the valet goes down the list for a second, and then he stops, looks up at you, his eyes... I give him a wink. His eyes narrow, he blushes, <laughs> <laughs> and then he says... Well, I must say, you look quite good with your clothes on. <laughs> Vic is just like, why I going back and forth like, what the hell is this? <laughs> you were famous and didn't tell me? Nevertheless, sir, your name is not on the list. However, as I was saying, and he, he hands you a, a tablet, <laughs> says, uh, you are welcome to apply. Uh, there is a lottery system, and the uh, uh, proprietors will occasionally pull from the list at random and invite some individuals for a uh, an evening of unexpected fun. And it's worth a shot, they require right? require your services, Doctor. And if I may be quite right. honest, it is not entirely random. <laughs> and Wolf gives him a nod, and he fills it out. Does he fill but- it out as Wolf or the Wolf Man? <laughs> uh... If there's a nickname section, it's uh, James the Wolfman Wolf. And, <laughs> and Vic fills his out as well. It's like a little too detailed, almost a resume. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just like, you know, from that cartoon show that your child liked. Yes, yes, thank you. He takes the tablet back, looks back at Wolf, blushes again, and goes, Well, have a good night. <laughs> I give him another wink. Okay, what he, the hell he, was that? He adjusts his tie and stands up very straight as you walk away. Very straight. Nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, good word choice. Uh, as we're walking away, Wolf just kind of slumps, because god damn it, he was so close. What? what? Okay, uh, okay. First things first, you need to explain what just happened there. What, who are you, Wolfman? Reveal yourself <laughs> to me, Wolfman. <laughs> Vic. Wolf. I did poor. 
Okay, so, how's it, everybody? No, 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 no. You don't understand. I did a lot of porn. Oh. See, I used to be built kind of like JD. Okay. What happened? And, <laughs> uh, God. First up, fuck you. <laughs> Second. It's a genuine uh, question. I'm, I... Uh, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. No. Look, uh, it's not that complicated. I did porn. I was pretty popular. I won some awards, and, you know, in the gay bear community, I'm a thing. Oh, they have, they have, they have awards? Yeah. Oh, now, it's, it, 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 Vic takes a, does like a little, like, I wonder if there's a way that I can exploit this. <laughs> exploit? Vic exploit? Exploit this. <laughs> No. <laughs> exploitation. Uh, Hashtag exploitation. That uh, oh no. And Michael's out. God. Michael's down. Exploitation. We killed Michael. Hold on, oh, I'm going on Michael. Instagram right now. <laughs> okay, after the show, darling. It's, I am. It's, Just a Darla. Darling. Okay, so all right. So, like, what are we gonna do now? Well, we got two options. We could be responsible and kind of wait, you know, just kind of sit around with our thumbs up our ass until we get a text message. Okay. Or we sneak in. Which is going to be hard because it's on the, like, 42nd floor. Nice. We, uh, well... Okay, we're going to need to, like, have assumed identities. But I think we can pull it off. I'm having fun! What?! No, I'm just impressed. Okay, I'm down. When was the last time? Uh, when when was the last time that I had anything interesting going on? That's a joke. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So can we are, stealth our way into this club? So who are you? How about we make up each other's uh, assumed identities? Okay. <laughs> All right. You are Ken Tashin. Hold on, I gotta write this down. A... Ken, Ken Tashin? Yeah, Ken Tashin. That means bag in German, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, bad time to mention he failed German in high school. Um, Ken bag. Got Ken it. Ta- let, let him talk. <laughs> you are an art gallery owner in San Diego. And you are the one who discovered uh, Murakami. Okay. And uh, for an American audience, uh, very particular, very very specific. Okay, it can't okay. be you discovered him. Hold on, I'll have to Google Murakami. For an American audience, you found him. Okay, I'll have to Google Murakami. But all right, I'll just say that he's he's very uh, forward thinking. I don't know. It's the art world. Okay. All right. Uh, what do you got for me? You are going. You okay? Okay. Uh, you are Benjamin Tool with an E at the end. You have cute. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> yeah. And you, uh, you, uh, you are in the business of buying out nightclubs right as they get cool, and then selling them as they are not cool. That's a terrible business strategy. It's it, it, it's surprisingly lucrative. All right, you're real. You're in real estate. Shit. Fine. Okay. Fine. I can work with that. Yes. Real estate. And uh, your your claim to fame is uh, I'm having trouble. You were in gay porn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bad at really, improv. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Gotta be. Yes. I was in gay porn. I was the fucking Wolfman. No. no. <laughs> so you're using your identity as your real identity. Save us from this text message. He doesn't do real estate in real life. <laughs> oh, oh no. You just you just can't let you're you're just in shock. I'm impressed. You? <laughs> you're impressed. Yes. 
It's really cool that huh. you go from porn to learning, like, doctor <coughs> shit. I was doing both at the same time. Damn. <laughs> I've only ever done one thing, so congratulations. It's not that complicated. You can keep your dick wet and, you know, study. It's not like a one or the other situation. You know what? I'm, I'm not going into this with you. <laughs> All right. All right, that was delightful. How are you going to get in? <laughs> Cue the Mission Impossible music. Dun, dun. All right. So uh, do, I guess, an investigation check to see if there's another entrance. Is the, you know what? This is a hotel, right? Yes. There's probably a hotel bar. It's okay. Indeed, we, there is. We can make our way there, pretending like we're going to that. And uh, then once yeah. you know security is clear, why not just you know take the elevator up? Okay. Sounds like a plan. I don't have a better plan. So why? Okay. <laughs> so roll me a uh, presence stairs. expression, both of you, for Where's maintaining. Where's the stairs? Wait, nine floors. Yes. Yeah, so, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> so roll me presence expression to maintain your cover identities. Okay. However close uh, to reality. I'm going to go. Be. I'm going to be acting. I am getting into the into the identity of Ken Tashin. <laughs> I love this episode. Can I say Four successes. <laughs> Four successes. <laughs> we believe that you did gay porn. Open was like, bitch, uh, I'm too old a porn star. <laughs> <laughs> and his <laughs> twink boyfriend. <laughs> you should have two such a great porn star name. It has an E at the end. It makes it fancy. <laughs> so you both succeed at maintaining your cover. Oh, no. Um, as you approach, you want to go up the stairs, right? That was the plan? Uh, go for the bar, and then if the stairs or the elevator, well, probably not the elevator, but if the stairs look clear. Yeah. How many flights of stairs? Don't make the fat guy do the stairs, man. That's just me. Okay, fine. We'll check the, we'll check the elevator. All right. So as you approach the elevator, there is a security guard on duty, and it is your friend Teddy. (gasps) Oh. Uh, Teddy! Hey! Oh, hey, that guy. How's it going? Hey, uh, listen. You saved my bacon earlier, and I clap a hand on Vic. This is our producer. Uh, he used to be a voice actor, but now he's really into the whole producing game. He's making the show really special. Uh, we got an invite earlier to head on up. Uh, Vic, you want to say hi? Oh, uh, hey, uh, nice to meet you. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Vic Tashin. Tashin. Yeah, um, I've, I've heard of you. Cool. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, oh, you don't need a kid. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm very interested in looking at this, uh, at this, at this set. I'm, uh, I, I'm really, I'm really excited for, uh, for, you know, just potential business opportunities. <laughs> uh, what time is it, by the way? <laughs> um, In game time? In game, yeah. In game time, it is, uh, I'd say about <laughs> nine, <coughs> I'd say about nine o'clock. Yeah, uh, we have a 9.15 meeting with, uh, you know, the guys upstairs. Uh, you know, so if you could just buzz us in. You know, they, they really didn't mention that. Are are you sure you're on the list? I mean, this earlier today, you were just checking it out, the place. You said you'd never been. Sorry. I, yeah, I, I was checking it out for the producer. I, I'm, he really wanted to make this work. Uh, Going to make a sub roll. Sure. <laughs> All right. I'm going to lie. <laughs> Good luck. Fly, 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 fly. I'm going to burn a willpower on this one because I really don't want to fail. He's going to act like he's texting them and then, and just the whole time he's texting Wolf saying like, shit, 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 shit. Yeah, why I did you change lie. up the Mason. story on me? I'm terrified. Mason can't lie. I know I can't. Well, we can't lie. We're bad liars. Well, who can lie in this party? I can persuade. No, I can. I can, I can Vic persuade. can't oh, lie. Oh, it's just oh, he's supposed to. Oh, 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 oh. 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 Ew. That got sexual. I, I can persuade and intimidate. Oh, I'm having fun. I can persuade um, and persuade. I, I'm just going to show this to everyone real quick. <laughs> Seven successes. No fucking way. Damn. Yes. Damn you, Stephen. I am a lying god. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you. So, he goes, um, oh, you know, this is really awkward. Uh, I don't, uh, I mean, I guess if you say so... That's that's good. I was about to call on my day for this whole thing to get awkward. Oh yeah, of course, of course. Right this way. Yeah. Thank oh, you. But and what was your name again? Teddy. You're great, Teddy. He says giving me like a stern pat hey, on the hey, shoulder. Hey, thanks. Do, do you know Angelina Jolie? 
We met. Really? Yeah. Halitosis. Oh, really? You wouldn't expect it. Did you, could you, um, if I, like, if I, like, sent something with... Yeah, hit me up on Facebook. All right, well, we're heading up now. Bye. Okay. And you step into the elevator and the door's closed. Oh, Teddy. Teddy. He just wants to be Angelina Jolie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, if Angelina Jolie ever finds out that I said that. <laughs> I've never even met her. I'm sure she's a perfectly nice person. The Scientology ninjas. How am I a better liar than she's you? She's not a Scientologist. Oh, she's not? No. I no. just assume. I don't know. How dare you? She's just crazy. That's fine. I don't know anything All right, guys. Let's get back her. in the scene. <laughs> Cut that out. What if Angelina Jolie listens to this? <laughs> <laughs> She'll get over it. She'll cry into her giant piles of money and adopted children. Why does she keep them in a pile? <laughs> Would you? No! <laughs> okay. I gotta stop. Uh, I gotta stop here. Play the damn scene. Okay. Alright, so we're in the we're in the elevator. And uh, we're going up and just as soon as the doors close, Vic is just Oh, okay. I uh, I had like two minutes to prepare for that character. I was not ready. How am I a better liar than you? It's not. It's like, acting. It's different. How's it different? Lying is just where I'm being myself, and when I'm acting, I'm well. I'm someone else. How does that not make sense to you? I. Okay. Fair enough. Ding! <laughs> What's that? So you step out into the previously described club area, except that now it is full of people and thumping bass and lights uh, sort of flashing across your eyes and spanning the catwalks. And on the stage is a very lively burlesque performance in mid swing. Okay, he says, like, kind of shouting over the music to Wolf's, like, okay, this place is banging. Thank you for taking me here. <laughs> You're welcome. So where? what are we looking for? We're getting a drink. Nice start. Let's go. All right. Wolf is going to open up the YouTube video again, and he's going to try to take a guess on what uh, Jared was drinking that night. Comes from the third tap to the left. <laughs> third tap from the left. All right. So he heads down. Is he like the oldest guy here? Uh, easily. Uh, I'm like 32. This is bullshit. <laughs> not that old. But they are they are a industrious crowd. They're not college students. Mm-hmm. They're not sort of random clubbing people. They are exceedingly successful Silicon Valley types, just the Chicago version. You're younger than J.D. <laughs> Fair enough. So once we're down at the giant keg thing, uh gonna find the bartender and order a drink. Alright, you order your drinks and he gives you, you know, the hair of the dog you asked for. Cheers. Yeah, cheers to that. Clink. Clink. And I down it. Whoa. Okay, I thought we were looking for something. I didn't realize <laughs> we were here to party. Clug. So you both down your drinks. Ah, yep. And when you do... The world around you whites out. And that is where we will leave you. <clears throat> Shit. <clears throat> we will come back to you once we have resolved yes! Mackenzie's storyline. Ooh. You just got, like, spooky roofied. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just got, got spooky. <laughs> no. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think we were all yes! Yes, I love this whole plot. I love this plot. <laughs> oh no, spoofy and Chicago. You guys are gonna wake up in a bathtub full of ice and got kidneys. You're gonna, <laughs> ben Shippen will be looking down at you like I, you could have been honest. Ice. Things about to get Vic explicit. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh, I will. I will be damned if you if you Vic exploitate this. <laughs> this <is> exploitation. <laughs> You guys went off on your own away from the party ridiculous. where where Wolf Victor. knew bad shit happened, and then you did exactly what that dude did. Yeah, that stuff's gonna happen. <laughs> this is, this is, yeah. So we'll cut back to all of you at the mm-hmm. uh, Physical Therapy Institute. Uh, John Mason was with Carver exploring deeper into the physical therapy mm-hmm. area. You don't find anything noteworthy. 
but you do, you know, learn some more about what they do there and uh, how long Mackenzie and Carver's family seem to have been plagued with this curse. And uh, you just get a, a general idea for the situation from Carver. And now I think yeah. you're all ready to go to the theater. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll go collect at least Mason, if not Carver as well. Probably just Mason. Carver yeah, is working. Carver's, yeah, working, yeah. So, all right. Um, you all ride the the uh, Uber over to the theater. Well, we have the van. Oh, you do have the And van. even then, that could probably fit her wheelchair as well. Yeah. Um, she'll need some assistance. Yeah, well, I'll help her out. Yeah. Yep. Obviously. It'll be something I'm used to doing. So, yeah, you all get to work, and uh, Mackenzie leads you into the theater. Wow. I got to tell you, this is a lot easier with you here. <laughs> uh, well, uh Good thing, then. Especially, yeah, the shitty uh, thing about the elevated train is you have to get elevated to ride it. Yeah. Uh, that'd be... Uh, that'd be uh, not not awesome. <clears throat> so anyway, um, mm-hmm. yep, this is where I work. And she wheels you, sort of wheels herself mm-hmm. and leads you all down. And they, do they have kind of clearly some, like, set up stuff for, a, like, oh, yeah, there's, ramps there's, and whatnot? And... Yeah, they've set up things to allow her to work there. Yes. Walking into the theater, do I get any kind of sense <coughs> from the place? Anything that seems weird? Make a roll. Would that just be uh, <coughs> eye for the strange? Also, yeah. Also, keeping an eye out for a man in a black suit <laughs> with a briefcase wearing a trilby. Okay. <laughs> this is. Okay. Two successes and three. <clears throat> three successes. Two just for the perception. All right, so JD, you do not see the man in the suit. Um, Darla for two, the three. The building has a old energy to it. It is a a sort of theater built in the uh, early 20s, and it has the the trappings of that era all around. It's well maintained, and it has the the sort of smell of old books and and, um, velvet curtains. What you pick up on is more of a familiarity with the energy of the place than on any specific entity or, or experience. It mostly just feels familiar because you were psychically here earlier tonight. So you feel as though you're stepping back into a space you've already occupied versus seeing something for the first time. Yes. I would be actively looking for a feeling similar to what I feel about Mackenzie. About Mackenzie. Um, you only detect that around her. Sure. The place, as far as you can tell, seems to be more because she is here, the energy is here, mm-hmm. than the other way around. Okay. Um, I, uh, Darla will go over to <clears throat> Mackenzie and she will sort of um, lean over and point where the man, where she saw the man on the stage. <laughs> She'll go, he was standing uh, right there. Do you do anything over there? Is there any kind of... Well, I I work underneath the stage, you know, pretty much every day. Uh, and in fact, I'm about to go set my charges if you guys want to see. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely yeah. go with you. If, if I'm, I'm going to be sticking right next to her, like, if, the whole time. If you don't feel comfortable going under there, I'm actually kind of handy with that sort of thing. So <laughs> uh, I, I could, can, I could I, substitute for you. We I could can instruct. handle myself, thank you. <laughs> she can't handle herself. I'm sure she can. Up until Look, I, it happens. I know I'm in a wheel- wheelchair, okay. but... That has nothing to do with my concerns. You could be of his exact build, and I would be... Oh, I am. Similarly concerned. <laughs> she, she is. <laughs> she quietly yeah, flexed strong. that and flexes she's, that. She's a strong shooting. person. She's, she, before, she's very heartily built. Before her accident, she was a stunt person as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so uh, she... Uh, still takes offense, even though you try to defend yourself, <laughs> and and uh, wheels and shows you the sort of ramp going down underneath the stage. You can see actually a doorway that leads to the orchestra pit, and then next to it a door that leads under the stage. And she goes under there and conveniently fits quite nicely in her chair. It's actually a lot easier for her to do this job than it used to be. And uh, she goes along her route. There are several uh, boxes set into the stage at different points with lots of different, very complicated mechanisms connected to a audiovisual board that she uses to sort of set and detonate these charges during the performances. Um, at any point in this time, do we ever 
go to a place that looks like it might be under the place that that man was standing. Yeah, you're heading that way. Okay. So uh, she goes down the line going through her tasks and, and sort of animatedly showing you all what she's doing and how it all works. She's kind of excited to have an audience. It's been quiet for her lately. And then when she gets to this particular box, she points out to you. Uh, so under the stage, we're about where <laughs> you pointed earlier uh-huh. is this box here. Just uh, do me a, a favor, and I'm not going to, you know, disparage your work in any in any way. I don't really know what this is like, but could you just double check this box just to, just in case let me, let me, he is a, like a bad old man of some sort? Mind if I have a look at it first, just just in case <laughs> it's nothing on you. You know, you're better at this than I am. Yes. Yeah, so why should you look first? Huh? I just want to look first. I just want to look first. <laughs> Darla takes a step back. <laughs> um, I'm just looking around passively, unseen sensing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just let me look um, first, okay? Yep. Thumb rest on me. <laughs> again? We're doing this again. Yes, because because if it's between your stubbornness and my pride, no one's going to win, all right? So we okay. have to decide impartially. Okay. Um, while they're thumb wrestling, can I do an eye? Yeah, yeah, just roll a die. <laughs> Whoever rolls higher. Seven. Five. She wins. <laughs> I'm doing it. But, but, but while they're them wrestling, can I do an eye first range? Yeah, please do an eye first for this range. And please do an unseen sense. I am hovering. I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm concentrating on the box. Yes. Oh, that was garbage. The uh, nada. John just keeps going. His dice just keep exploding. Uh, four. Four. Uh, you get a very strong feeling that matches Mackenzie on this box. Uh, fair warning, uh, whatever's on above you, uh, it's in that box too. Uh, but, but but do your professional thing. I'm just letting you know. Stopping her wheelchair. <laughs> okay, you're not going near that thing. JD. You're not going near that JD, thing. JD, be reasonable. Mm, no, no, no. <laughs> what what are you supposed what am I supposed to do? Just not lay the charge for the big finale? I think I know we let that. somebody else look at it first. I know how to do that. <sighs> you could tell me how to do this that. This is your whole curse thing. Mason, I, I wouldn't. You've insisted on it for yet. forever. Yes. I'm but finally on board and you let me be on board. JD, I need to do things myself, okay? <laughs> That's not what it's about though. <laughs> I can't spend my whole life being afraid of this thing. Well, I'm asking one box. One box, one time. One box, one time. Fine. JD will do it. One box, one time. So, so I'll go she... over to the box and just try to work out that everything is kosher with the whole setup. I'm sure I've seen them before. Yeah. Um, you'll get a profession die for your stunt, stunt okay. training. Yes. Did you, did you ever explain to me how the bat works, Mason? Like no. It, it okay. I've, I haven't explained to anybody how cool. like, anything works. <laughs> <laughs> you could have. You could have at some point asked Charlie. Uh, Charlie would have known. I don't think he does. Such he profound know. trust between this me. table. <laughs> <laughs> we are all just holding daggers behind our backs. <laughs> yeah. You guys know all my shit. Specifically, he, he doesn't. He's not a sharer. He's we'll, not a we'll big get sharer. To everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Literally, literally everybody has done at least one quest on their own and not told the party. <laughs> everyone's I think done. I have. Everyone's done at least one porn. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, right. So it'll be your professional die. It will be uh, intelligence. Yeah. And Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, what would be rigging explosives? I would do one of these or one of these or crafts, crafts would mm. work on the professional die. On the professional die, it's just one die. Just one die. Just one die. You get a free mm. die for being trained in it. Mm. Fire. I have. I, I have do that. Am crafts. I... I have investigation. Do crafts. Do that. Yeah, that's right. You you have some crafts. Well, can, I, can I choose with investigation or crafts? Because my investigation is a little bit better than the crafts. So for investigation, okay. So for investigation, you can check the box, but you can't rig it the way she needs you to without crafts. <laughs> well, but I can. So can, you I, can, can I check that it it's rigged properly first? Yes. So you can do. I wouldn't want to mess with it at first. So you can do two checks. Is what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll look at it first. Yeah. 
Go with that. I'm going to put a willpower into that. Okay. Good time to get some willpower. Three. Uh, so yeah, everything seems to be in order. And you check all of the, the safety backups and they're plugged mm-hmm. in. All of the fuses are, seem fresh and in good condition. It seems about as safe as an explosive device ever is. <laughs> okay. So every, everything, everything looks good. Yeah, and you feel <laughs> solid in your check. Like, when you're done, you're like, yeah, that's exactly that's, how it should look. That is correct. Yes. Like, okay, it looks good. It looks, it looks great. It looks great. Okay. Okay. <laughs> looks. Perfect. I should hope so because I rigged it. So and I, that's what I expected. I want to be safe. I, I still have, I still have bad feeling about this. I know that I know this is you know your job, and I know this is your your pride as a professional person, but. I just got a real bad feeling about it. I don't, I don't I mean, maybe it'll look all right, but what if there's like, I don't know, an electrical short or something and it blows up, uh, not in, in any way related to what you did. And I just, I would feel better if, if you could just say, well, it just, you know, a malfunction, just not use it. Maybe. Yeah, I'd step out and see if there's anything going on about while we're doing this. Okay. Um, well, I'm doing it, so... I'm just... Okay, well, do you have to be anywhere near it when it goes off? Not when it goes off, no. It will go off for hours. All right. I don't know. I just have, I have a bad feeling. Is anybody anywhere near it when it goes? Well, no. I mean, that's safety protocol. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean... Obviously, it, the it, actors are on the stage. Yeah. But they're actually several feet in front of it for safety. Okay. I, 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 okay. Hear me out. I know that you probably don't believe in the, in the man in the hat. I mean, that's kind of a kind of big a big thing. You know, you didn't see it the way I I saw it. But what what if he is the one that is causing the problems, like like a bad spirit? And what if we have gotten an an insight on? what he has planned. Does that make sense? Well, Miss Witch, if you're so concerned about this this premonition, why don't you bless the box or whatever you do? Oh, I don't do that. That is the realm of Jesus. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Can I... Hmm. The, it's just crew setting up right now. Can yeah. I see if anybody's watching the stage right now. I just kind of sit back and just kind of have a look around the room. Watch people. Yeah, you can sit into the, the auditorium seating. It's, um, I mean, it, it's an ongoing show, so it's mostly mm-hmm. just maintenance. People checking, rigging mm-hmm. and, and adjusting lights, making sure that the, all the bolts are working the way they should. There's no real setup like you all do on your show because it's already been running for quite some time. Mm-hmm. So it's very sedate mm-hmm. uh, as you're sitting there. You don't see much. Uh, so, are we doing this? I mean, I don't think we really have a choice. I mean, I guess at the end of the day, it's it's, it's your choice. Uh, you can do whatever you want. I'm just saying, you asked me to look into it, and that's that's how it felt. What's what's the worst that happens if there's an incident around that box? I mean, they're just they're just a little bit of, of a, a flash. Flash yeah. bombs. I mean, nothing really. It can't. It can't kill you. Why would we? Why would we use it in a stage show I'm if just, it was I'm, dangerous? I'm just, I'm just asking if you know of anything that might go wrong. The worst that could happen is someone gets singed. You know this stuff, man. Yeah, I'm just saying. Well, you're the one who's usually kind of the. My curse is gonna make whatever do whatever. That's why I'm saying this is totally safe. I. Why would I bring in something that could hurt me I, when I know that I'm at risk? Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm just freaking out a little bit, okay? But what if it's like, okay, did you ever see that movie Final Destination where it's like a domino oh, effect? Christ. No, I'm serious. Fine. Whatever. If you want to get lit on fire, be my guest. I, I'll, I'll just going to hang out and see what happens. I'm doing this.
I mean, it's nothing elegant, but she does it. Nothing happens. I was thinking about when it goes off, personally, but... And she moves on down the line and continues work. I'm just going to be shadowing her the whole time. <laughs> you don't sense anything odd after that. That's all. Okay. Um, I wanted to watch the show. Okay. So So we'll fast forward to the show. I mean, did uh, John was doing some stuff. Did you... I was just watching to see if anybody was watching what we were doing. Since... <clears throat> Is there a way for me to kind of like step back into the costuming space and look for a black suit sure. and a trilby? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything there? Do I need to? Yeah, I mean, just roll and investigate. Investigating. Um, it's it's open. There's no one there to see you to do it. So <laughs> it would be an incredible prank. <laughs> No, freaking way. Five. <laughs> uh, Ridiculous. <laughs> Zeros are the best. I thought this was supposed to be a story-focused game. How have you managed to do this? <laughs> Sheer, unadulterated power of tens. So you go into the costuming space, and you see a couple of racks of costumes and multiples of different costumes for when things are being dry cleaned or, or, and whatnot. You don't see a trilby anywhere, but you do see a black suit or mm-hmm. sections of a black suit. It's identified mm-hmm. uh, by a tag for, um, what did I say this play was about? World War Two. So it's designated for the president. Okay. Is there also, is there a, a case? There is a, a briefcase underneath. Uh, but what you notice for the five is not the suit. What you notice is that when you go to look closer at the suit, out of the corner of your eye, there are on the other wall uh, two makeup mirrors with light bulbs around the edges. And in the mirror, you see a trilby hanging on the clothing rack that is not there. What? I see a ghost trilby. (laughs) 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 Um... Move. I'm not even going to move. I'm just going to text them to come back here. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going to, like, stare at it. I'm just, like, staring at it, like, <laughs> like use the mirror to type the text. What is your text <laughs> Come back to the costume room right now, Ghost Trilby. Trilby <laughs> <laughs> walks in and is like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> am, am, I, am, I, am I still looking at it? You're still looking the at it. Show me in the mirror. It is stable. It's still there. Do you see that? Darla walks over and sort of like <laughs> look. pokes her head over JD's shoulder. And, and by the way, JD is like half crouched, and he's just like <laughs> s- super still. It's like he doesn't want to move at all. Like Steve, like, when do I? It's like he's to... gonna scare the trilby away. Do I see it? <laughs> yeah, everyone sees it. <laughs> and then like don't look at the rack. Can I touch it? No. So, looking at the mirror. Stay there. <laughs> I'm going okay. to run in. I'm going to go get McKenzie. Okay. Ethereal um, ghost trilby. I'm seeing sense. Yeah, I want to. I want to. I feel strange this shit. <laughs> no, no, it was looking really bad. And when I get to her, I'm essentially gonna just like run up and like start pushing her. <laughs> okay. That. Uh, With the only mean, context being Ghost Trilby. Ghost Trilby? <laughs> oh, that's not bad. I got you. Okay, so um, for three unseen cents, feels like Mackenzie. And that's all you get. Um, because that's all that ability does. So for Eye for the Strange. When you send your hands out to feel and you sort of uh, concentrate your psychic energy, your hands appear in the mirror. And when you reach, you can touch the hat. I pick it up. You pull it into the real world. A trilby appears in Darla's hand. (laughs) What the fuck? I drop it. (laughs) (laughs) Holy shit. Ho, ho. It's not a ghost trilby anymore! <laughs> Can you pull anything else through there? 
Is there anything else that if you're there's a whole old clothing rack? You're not sure if it's different than, but Can't, okay. So did I get a feeling when I pulled the trilby into our world? Was it like <laughs> felt tingly? <laughs> Sorry, like, that's, can that's you, a phrase I never expected. Felt tingly like tiger ball. <laughs> can I can I reverse that <laughs> and push my hand into that feeling? Yes. Can you stick your head However here? that feels, exactly. I yeah. assume we show up now and the ghost trilby's no longer a ghost trilby. <laughs> okay, so okay, actually I figured it out. So We're when soon. you reach out and you try and reverse what a tingle feels like. Your skin, you know how it feels like you're kind of being poked by pins and needles when you're tingling? Your skin sort of pricks outward in these little points, like you're literally tingling in reverse. And when you do that, your hand goes through, and you feel as though the rest of you could go through as well. It will not be comfortable, but you can do it. All right. I'm going to keep my hand there. I'm going to turn back to JD, and I'm going to be like, JD, uh... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you can put the trilby down. It's not the trilby, it's McKenzie. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hand gestures. Uh, JD, um, I think this, remember remember the, the portal to hell? Mm. Remember that? Oh, no. I, I think this might, I don't think it's hell, possibly. Um, but I think maybe this is the same mm. thing. You know, it's just a portal to another place. I mean, it, obviously, it's not our reality. Maybe I think I, I I can push myself into it. Maybe, but um, uh, hopefully, I can get back out if I if I disappear forever. You know, tell Vic I hate him. <laughs> 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 Savage. <laughs> Vic reawakens briefly. Just to just be going, like, uh, and then just <laughs> He just sneezes. Yeah. <laughs> Deck of many things. Damn. Someone somewhere hates you, Vic. <laughs> it's that, it's that, that's what anxiety is. <laughs> it's the feeling of that. Wait, no, that was me, and you probably shouldn't tell him that. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna push through on this. Maybe I can I can go in there and, and see what this man is. Can you just, like, look in first? Or do you have to go, like, all the way? Is it, like, all or nothing? I, I don't know. But if I get sucked in there, um, you know, you know. I'm gonna try and pull you out if it gets weird. Can you reach in there? No. But I can hold on to you while you stick your head in there. Alright, let's let's That's try Let's try. I'll, I'll try putting my head in first. Okay. Can you just kind of grab her belt and brace? Yeah, if you have a belt. If not, I'm just going to grab around your hips and brace. That's fine. So, you push your head... I don't mason. <laughs> you push your head through, and... <laughs> Does her head, like, disappear? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> At least that'll be shocking enough for McKinsey to believe us now. I bring the costume designer to, like, come in and be like, ah! <laughs> you stick your head Special through. Effects. And... When you look around, you see a bustling train station. What the fuck? At at rush hour, like five o'clock in the afternoon, orange light coming in through the windows. Um, roll me a investigation check, or it's really a memory check, is what it is. Oh. Wits. Wits. Wits composure. How about that? Give me wits composure. It's not bad for me. I'm not sure what memories would be, so wits can approach this. Maybe intelligence, I don't know. Two. Two. You've seen this before, actually. Um, this is the Grand Central train station in New York City. You've seen pictures of it before. And when you look down, you see a pair of tits. Yes. Not yours. A <laughs> pair of stone tits. You're wearing a toga. You are a statue in a fountain. What the fuck? <laughs> and your your stone arms are, are held out in front of you, one of them holding a, a sort of uh, cup and the other one holding a dagger. And uh, you realize that you are part of a, a sort of central fountain and there's water pouring out all around you as you look through this busy station. You see tits? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, when they're that big, you just you see tits. Um, but, okay, so... 
Or do any of the people that are walking around, do they look normal? They look- they're New Yorkers, so they don't notice you. <laughs> yeah, but do they look like, like modern people, or do they look yeah, like they're, people? Yeah, they're modern people, or they seem to be, as far as you can tell. I look around for the man. Uh, roll me an investigation. A straight up investigation? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, I mean wits. wits investigation. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be saying to McKinsey, like, so, yeah, um, she, she can do... What um, the fuck? I, 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 what I, the I, fuck? I'm still the holding on. The hat was in there. She didn't, like, slip through or something? No, you still got my butt. The hat was in there. The hat was Hips. in the, 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 the where her head is now. Why would I grab your butt? That's that's terrible for leverage. The hips. The hips. <laughs> um, panicking only the one. <laughs> now you don't see anything. Can but I... curiously, the longer you stay, you realize they don't see you either. Well, I'm a statue. Why would they look at me? Can I un- eye for the strange it? <laughs> sure. I mean, it was probably just like, yes. I mean, you already, <laughs> technically, you're already in the middle of an Eye for the Strange role. Yeah, okay. That's, fair. that's what's getting you here. So I would say you can't activate your ability again mm-hmm. without dropping it, yeah. and I don't think you want to decapitate yourself. No, that's, that's bad. <laughs> um, but what if you do it really fast? <laughs> it won't hurt. Apparently, I get to blink. Um, <laughs> can I push out my psychic sense? I'm kind of already using that already. Yeah, you really you are you for you are well tapped out for okay. Darla right okay, now. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna kind of walk up and like put my hand in the space, like hmm. and kind of like not in the space our head You're would be in. Us, <clears throat> not not in the space that our head would be in, but like near it. So not where you're not touching not her. In, yeah, yeah. Not gonna touch where okay. her you, where she is. You stay in your world. Okay. There's nothing there. Kind of around it, and there's nothing there. Mm-hmm. Okay, while he's doing that, um, Darla's gonna pull her head out of okay. the time. <laughs> and you see JD's kind of going like this. JD, what are you doing? <laughs> I was seeing if there was more. You're not a witch, JD. I, I, understand. I, I understand that. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? Your head's disappeared and shit. Oh, I told you, I'm a bona fide witch. I can do she, stuff like You didn't that. tell me she was an illusionist. You didn't tell me she was one of your fe- freaky Hollywood friends. It's, just, no, it's not, not an illusion. I can I can do this thing. She's just a weird person. I'm a witch. I told you, how many times do I have to say the word witch before you people understand what I mean? God damn, so the, the man in the hat was a real deal, huh? He's real. Well, what does that have to do with me? Can I inspect the hat? Yeah. Of course you can. We um, don't know. We don't know. But... Uh, okay. Now that I'm no longer holding, are you guys curious about what I saw on the other side, or yes, yes, it's both was there. Myself? <laughs> Come on, general. Three successes on the hat. I just want to see if there's anything <laughs> particularly interesting about it. Feels inorganic. You don't know why, but that word just comes to your mind. Like uh, I've I've done inorganic things before. Did it remind me at all of uh, when we were in St. Louis? That sort of inorganic. Remind me what part of St. Louis. Okay, so when we got to St. Louis and we were in the uh, the Cowboy Museum, yes, I, I wanted to get a sense for the place, and uh, it felt very inorganic. Oh, yes. It is, in fact, the, a similar way. Uh, this feels a lot like the museum. I'm just kind of oh. taping. Wait, is that trail free from oh. hell? <laughs> so you saw hell. No, I, I didn't, actually. It was near... You don't I don't know, know that. You don't know that. Who's <laughs> the psychic here, John? I wanted to make a joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just New York. I didn't mean potato, potato, but... Um, <laughs> I explained that it was New, like, New York? Like, where in New York? I, I explained that it looked like the train station. The Central Grand station. Central Station. And I was the statue. Okay. Et cetera, et cetera. Was there a hat guy? No, not that I could see. <laughs> He would be a hatless guy, I believe. Yeah, I'm... Okay, can I see that? Can I see that hat? Uh, and she looks at it. Um, is there... You know how with hats, they have, like, like a, a, a maker's... Mark in mark, the inside? Or, like, a, like a tag in it that says where it's made? Yeah, sure. So you turn over the hat, and um, inside you see a tag, and it says... W at sign um, yen sign 
lower T, uppercase T. No, I said that wrong. W, yen sign, at sign, lowercase T, uppercase T. Why? It says Wyatt. <laughs> but like. Look at Mackenzie Wyatt. Wyatt? Do you know anybody named Wyatt? No. What? <laughs> Erp? <laughs> I don't know. I just wanted it. Darla rolls her eyes and pulls out her phone, um, and she types it in like that. Uh, okay. Into Google. Um, it uh, it doesn't turn up any results. Sorry, nothing here but us chickens. Does Google say that? Sometimes, <laughs> or maybe it's the dinosaurs. The Google dinosaur. Oh, it might be the dinosaur. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Do you think his name is Wyatt? Could be. I mean, what else do you write in your hat? That's really <laughs> weird. Um, was anybody in your family named Wyatt? No. No, that's like a weird Old West name, right? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> what, um, Darla puts the hat on. Mm-hmm. She looks very stylish. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't do anything. Um, it's a hat. It's a hat. I don't understand, okay? Because, like, I'm not kind of the hat was in a weird everyone. dimension, right? In, in, the, in the reflection of our current dimension. But when I stuck my head in, I was in New York. That doesn't make any sense. Like, how... Where was the hat if the hat wasn't also in New York? Wyatt. Tadler. Tadler. <laughs> He's trying to think of it backwards. One sec. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, once I'm kind of out of earshot of everyone else, I'd kind of like to pull out the brooch mm-hmm. that, I, that I had crafted for me. I'm kind of... Uh, <laughs> Run it between my fingers a bit and go, uh, uh, Great Aunt Bethany, what do you think? Have you seen anything like this in your life? Um, you get, you get a smell. You get the smell of ozone. Like, uh, electricity after a thunderstorm. Mm, are there any breakers in this room? There is, actually. I'm Behind just... the rack uh, where you all have been playing, there is, in fact, a breaker box in the wall. <laughs> gonna... Is this serious? Is this <laughs> he goes in and he moves it over. I, I, I'm going to pull, a, pull out a, a, a kerchief and open up the breaker box and have a look. So inside, it looks fairly normal. Um, however, when you put the brooch nearby, uh, it... One of the uh, switches stands out to you. There's a sort of um, energy to it that feels like your unseen sins. It's dusty. I kind of brush off the where the name should be. Um, it says, um, "Help me out, Michael. What What are the boxes in the stage called? The trap doors? <laughs> Is it, are they just called trap doors? I mean, yeah. I mean, you can call it whatever you want. Yeah, I just call it trap door. Yeah, call it says trap door eight. Uh, Mackenzie, uh, remind me again, what, uh, what trapdoor were we standing under when we were working on that one panel we gave so much fuss about? Oh, eight. Yeah, that's where the, the, uh, the hero, after the explosion and the hero dies in the end, he falls through that trapdoor. Can I see the stage from here? Uh, no, you're behind the stage. Oh, okay. I flick the switch. Okay. Um, nothing visible happens, but Mackenzie kind of gets excited. She's like, well, I guess we should go check it out, right? Sure. I take the hat. <laughs> I mean, I guess. Uh, she leads the way and, and wheels you all back there. And um, it, it all looks the same, but uh, Mackenzie gets there first and she sticks her hand <clears throat> in the space, you know, above the stage. And uh, she sort of shrieks and pulls it back and then looks around and then sticks it back. And when she goes through, her hand disappears. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Jala runs over. <laughs> sticks her head in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, uh, on the other side, you see the train station. Only this time, uh, as you look around, you see 
uh, floods of people coming in and away from where you are standing. And as you look to the side, uh, you see all kinds of different doors. You see, you know, rickety old Victorian doors and steel plated, um, you know, modern hospital type doors and, you know, paneled wood doors from a Midwestern home and a wrought iron gate coming from a, you know, a furl of, of leaves and, and brambles. And in your case, a wooden trap door with a 1920s hardwood flooring on top. I pull my head back out. Uh, it's, it's, it's only in the head space, right? Like, whenever I disappear, it just is the head, right? Yeah. But you get the sense that you could go all the way through this time. Do I need, a, like, a boost or anything? Or could I just pull myself through it? You can pull yourself through. Oh, okay. Because uh, you're, you're under the stage, but anyone who's not Mackenzie will have to crouch to stay there. So it would really just be a matter of standing up. Oh, okay. I understand. I thought it was higher than that. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, We'd all be like, yeah. yeah. Darla's really show got the hat, right? Yes. She's gonna. She's wearing the hat. She's gonna poke her head through and it's like, God, it's, a, it's another doorway. And then she goes through it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mackenzie's like. What do you want to do? I, I mean, I. What if there's. What if I can't get around? What if I. I probably shouldn't go. Do you want to? Yeah. I'm just gonna scoop her up. <laughs> oh, <this is> really <laughs> cute. So you scoop her up, and what's next? I'm gonna go through. All right, Mason. Is there a pipe? Or, 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 I go through. <laughs> <laughs> so you all emerge into Grand Central Station at rush hour uh, o'clock. I'm gonna I'm gonna look around. Do I see the man in the hat? Or the man without the hat. No, there's. It's. It would be nearly impossible. There are hundreds and hundreds of people swarming. If I may, before I step all the way through, can I look and see what I just came through definitively? Yeah. So you turn around and you can see the dark understage through the door. You see a trap door hanging sideways. Okay. And if you were to angle your head around, you would see the, the finished stage floor on the other side of the door. Okay. And next to that, and indeed crawling up the walls, are all kinds of doors and windows. <clears throat> okay, can I take a moment and mm. definitively commit to my mind as best I can where this is? Yes. Okay. Um, Since there's multiple doorways, I don't want to go through Well, it's one. curious, because as you <clears throat> look away, the wall seems to kind of fade. And then whenever you turn back with the intent of seeing the wall, you do see it, if that makes sense. Okay. But as you start to, to become more attuned to the space and, and used to being in this area, the wall itself seems to sort of dim away and you see, you know, a walkway beyond it. You get the sense that <laughs> this is this is a sort of extra dimensional space. It exists <laughs> there, but it also doesn't. <laughs> And in fact, all of you observe this as you sort of stand there and get your bearings. That as, as soon, in, in the way that, that some mm. paintings, the eyes seem to follow you, even though you know they're not moving. Yeah. In the same way, this wall seems to exist, but it also feels almost like an optical illusion. And the second you don't want to see it mm -hmm. or your eyes don't focus on it, yeah. it sort of doesn't exist anymore. Are we all just, are we all just still ourselves? Yeah, you're all still well? yourselves. Same inorganic feeling? <clears throat> uh, Yes. Very much so here, and you specifically feel it on all of the individuals walking around you, coming out of these doors. Okay. Mm -hmm. You do not feel it for all of the general people in Grand Central Station, but you feel it for the people who are walking out of these doorways with you. <clears throat> and and indeed, the longer you all stand still there, you start to get sort of glances and, and the attention of other people walking through the doors. You get the sense that, that you all really should be going somewhere. Um, I think some of the people going through these doors might need help from Henry. <clears throat> are do okay? So the people that what do the people look like that are walking around? Are they sort of a mishmash or all sorts? Uh, and and not all people. Some of them are dogs, and some of them are sort of young children, sort of walking around on their own. Um. Most of them are dressed like <laughs> business people in, in sort of, you know, business casual pencil skirts and, and casual suits and things like that. Um, all of them, 
for all intents and purposes, have the, the sort of dazed glaze of, of a commuter on their face. Looking for Trilby Man. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can investigate. Yeah, I'd like to um, walk forward a little bit um, and, and sort of just throw my senses out. He's right there. Kind of man. You there, Monsieur, get back in my ear. <laughs> the what? I'm speaking their language. Two successes. That's only one. One, two, two, two. So, um, you don't see the man you're looking for. However, as you stand there, um, you see someone uh, walking across the train station, and at first it seems like they're just a commuter like everybody else. But you start to notice that the, those of you with twos pick up on them a little earlier than Darla. Uh, it's a a uh, rather tall, skinny man um, walking directly for you. And when he gets <laughs> to you, he looks at all of you and he says, you all really shouldn't be here. And then he picks up Darla and uh, Mason and sort of by their shoulders and pushes them back toward the door you came out of. Okay, okay, wait a minute, sir. Okay. What is this? <laughs> Can I... Where, where is here? Resist? You gotta tell me. This is the 1965 wormhole and none of you should be here. <laughs> the what? And that's where we'll end for today's episode. Oh, oh, no! No. <laughs> no, it's so good! God damn it, you're back in 1965. <laughs> hate it when that happens. I hate being in 1965! <laughs> Hey, uh, hey, uh, we might be able to find that kid if we apply this. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> Uncanny Valley Cancer Cell is created and produced by Buckle Nagel and Stephen Pope. The players are Garrett Schmigel as Vic, Deanna Venable as Darla, Michael Morris as JD, Stephen Pope as James Wolfe, and John Tompkins as Mason, with Buckle Nagel running the game. Hunter the Vigil 2nd Edition is produced and published by Onyx Path Publishing. Find us online at Uncanny Show on Twitter and www.uncannyvalleyshow.com. Make sure you check out Wild Cards, Experience Pointers, and other Saving Throw Show productions on the Saving Throw Network. And hey, have a good night. <laughs>